Must be sissy. He's my uncle. I feel like sissy does an incredible job of doing something groundbreaking and new and demonstrating grooming and what it results in and how it overwhelms, especially someone who's younger. I wrote, produced, and directed a short called Sissy, and that was based on a true story from my life. So very broken and my parents divorced and everything was really, really a mess and kind of convoluted and still entangled with the whole you know, Jehovah Witness situation. I found myself being turned over to um, an adult male when I was 14 on the verge of turning 15. We were traveling across the Southwest states. I was alone with him for several months. People always like you in the beginning and then they get to know you and they see what you're really like and they don't want to be around you anymore. I'm running through the streets in nothing but my cowboy boots and a pair of underpants. And I'm half cocked because, uh, well, I've been drinking wild turkey since about three in the afternoon. When are you going to be back? I don't know, a couple hours. You must be sissy. He's my uncle. This takes all the concentration of all four of us in here to raise this. Why are you looking at me like that? First, I was told that it was going to be a trip where we would have fun and he was a performer and a magician and a comedian and we were going to go to Vegas and Reno and I would be his assistant. And so I was, you know, love bombed and gaslit. It just started with those, you know, very small things, but he would have these very big, wild I don't know if he, you know, had rapid cycling, bipolar, or like what. I honestly can't diagnose the guy, but I just know that he was having tantrums, fits, breakdowns, and within those, he would have to try to find a way to blame me for them. And coming from the background that I came from, you know, I would become confused. One part of me was saying, this guy's crazy, and why is he ranting and raving and having this huge blow up over all these little things, you know? And then the other part of me would be like, well, maybe I am really stupid. I'm really dumb, and I deserve this. And eventually, that relationship deepened and broadened into a situation where I was in complete survival mode. He would subtly imply leaving me behind, subtly imply that he would send me home or, or that I was worthless or that, you know, um, I just hadn't been up to snuff or I was a burden now or whatever. Eventually thoughts started to creep into my head. If I could offer certain things to him, perhaps uh, that would keep me safe. And I, as an adult now, you know, who, you know, is in treatment and, and, and everything, I applaud my younger self for that wisdom and insight to do what I had to do in the moment to survive. But it is a very complex kind of sexual abuse that occurred. And I went most of my adult life believing that I was the instigator of it and that it was all my fault and that I somehow was inherently guilty of some kind of inappropriate sexual behavior. That was something that was set in my mind by some of my Jehovah Witness family members. I was put through a very nasty trial regarding a family member who also tried to seduce me and get me into an inappropriate relationship. I was blamed for having enticed him. I was just about two months past my 14th birthday. I was blamed for walking around the house in my towel and being uh, sexually enticing and that the whole entire incident, repeated incidents were all my fault, basically. I was conditioned, you know, and it was through kind of, you know, unpacking and educating myself about what this kind of slow grooming and love bombing does and how it damages your perception and your 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 brain really and you can find yourself doing things that you would never imagine yourself doing just to survive a situation 
And that's what that film is about. And I'm, you know, directing that as a full length feature on a much grander scale. It's so professional and it has some big name cast. And, and now you've got more time under your belt in the L.A. Yeah. world with more and more connections, probably than even then. Yeah. Did you direct the short? Mm -hmm. Use the short. Okay. The whole thing's amazing. And I really want everyone to go watch Sissy. And now it's the pilot essentially for a feature, which is so exciting. And that is all unfolding uh, this year. And finally, a lot of the elements that I've been meditating on and, and calling in are arriving. And that's feeling pretty great. Pretty, yeah, that's amazing. you know, So excited for you. You've got a wealth of knowledge and you're turning that into really impactful forms of art that will affect change in the world. Follow Bunny Roots Projects, Diary of Heather Keating. Go watch Sissy. I'm so excited to have been able to interview her, have a developing friendship, and I'm so excited for you to all follow her work as well. It's been an absolute pleasure. If you like this kind of content, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing on this video and joining on our new YouTube membership or on our Patreon. That helps keep these kinds of interviews coming and you'll get access to not only the full interview, but also the art offer from each guest, which is a new thing we're doing each month, as well as a live stream live call every month for members. So thank you so much. We'll see you next time.